Hello, uh, Joanna McLean here from Digital Schools Award Scotland. And today I'm joined with Lucy Scollin and Kay Harvey from Heriot Primary in Renfrewshire. Hello both, how are you? Good, thank you. Well, thanks for both coming along today to, to share your digital journey with us. Um, so Heriot Primary recently received their award, so it was just 2020, um, so not that long ago. Can you give us a little bit of context about the school, sort of location, size, number of teachers, etc.? Yeah, OK, so Heriot is based in Foxborough within Renfrewshire. Um, our current role is approximately about 250 children at the moment and split across 11 classes. That includes three composite classes. Staffing wise, we have 15 members of teaching staff and are well supported by two full time classroom assistants and two additional support and assistants. Uh, we are a quarter open school and we serve a diverse community. We also have an early learning and community class with division for 40 children. That's amazing, Lucy. And actually, you're not far from me. Um, I've just realised that. <laughs> Um, Fox Bar is quite close to me. So, um, Kay, I wonder if you could perhaps tell us a little bit. So, you have you achieved your reward during the pandemic at a time when um, learning and teaching had really undergone significant development. Um, there was lots of periods of traditional teaching, blended, remote learning. Can you describe how you led the school through this period of change? So, pre-COVID, before all the lockdowns and whatever our school you know the children and the staff were used to using ICT so you know we'd use tablets we've had e-bots all these kind of things in the school already um, and as the digital champion I was attending local authority training and that's what I heard about the digital schools award um, and the gentleman who led the training just said listen sign up for it go through you'll actually be surprised at how much you're already doing and I was because when you start going through, oh, you do this, you do that, we're not great at this. So you start to get a picture on the award. Green are things that you're doing really well. Orange, things that you maybe need to work on. And red, right, this is something that we're not doing yet. We really need to look into it. So we'd already started doing training. Um, and things that I was learning in the digital champions meetings, I was then bringing back and cascading to the staff. So it was things like the immersive reader function on Microsoft Word had no idea about it before the course but then since coming back and sharing it with the staff they've used it for grammar lessons they've used it for modern languages lessons there's so many uses for it but it just takes somebody telling you about it for you then to share that knowledge um so the school was already using ict throughout lessons you know as and when we needed it and then obviously lockdown came so we were kind of thrust into this, right, we need to have things up and running, platforms to use, a way of communicating and sending work with the children. So there was one night after the announcement and the staff were basically given a whistle-stop tour of the old classrooms. This is what we're going to be using. This is roughly <laughs> what we think they're going to have to need to know. And then the staff had to go really and teach themselves, you know, gave them the basics, but it was really, you, you need to go and use it. Um, and again, the next couple of days before the school shut, they kind of gave the children a whistle stop to as well. This is your login. This is how you access it. I'll send you work. So it really was, you know, our staff are really good and they're really robust. And we've already got a culture of sharing within the staff. So it was so easy to work together. By the way, I realised you could add a folder with these and I realised you could do this. So the staff were sharing all the time things that made it easier to use the platform. Um, which again put across the children, the children you want to look for. Um, I know that Lucy as well, she put together some, it was like step by step, this is how you use Google Classrooms, taking like screenshots of the, the pages and setting that to the parents as well, because I think we were all just thrown into a bit of chaos, <laughs> like nobody really knew what it was going to look like. So it was just kind of learning, you know, as we went, um, and adapting to the needs really of the school. Um, at that point, the primary ones had Seesaw as a platform. Um, so they continued to use Seesaw and then the rest of the school used school classrooms. And I think from then it was learning on the job, to be honest with you. Um, but there's such a great support out there of other teachers sharing lessons, ideas. So 
we all just adapted really you know Oh, that's fantastic, uh, Kay. Lovely to hear that you've you've got that, and I'm sure that will continue even um, when the the students come back after after Easter, um, when they're, they're all back in the classrooms, um, and seeing how that goes. And Lucy, what do you think, in your view, were some of the biggest challenges that you had to face, and how did you how did you address them? Oh, I think you're muted. Hold on. Some of the biggest challenges that we presented with, like many schools, was the lack of time to get prepared, particularly for lockdown one last March. Um, we spent a, a very brief period of time, as Kate just mentioned, working with staff to give them a short tour around Google Classroom. And really, it was over to staff to really embrace and to explore on their own. And the challenge for us was then that we didn't have that face to face contact with staff to support them. The pupils were the, the, the school closed um, within two days and off our kids went home and we had to really work hard within that week to make sure that we stayed connected to our pupils. So we used our social media um, to, to keep putting posts out there. Uh, we phoned lots of parents to help them log on and, and join on to the classroom. So many a time I sat you know, with a parent on the other end of the phone, right, what can you see now? Okay, click join, have you got this code? And, and that was really it, it and it was 100 miles an hour. Every day I had a list of parents that, and we look at the engagement levels because on a weekly basis staff were submitting the engagement levels and that gave us an indication of who might be struggling. And there was also the challenge of considering parents' individual circumstances. There were those that were working from home. There were those that um, maybe had one device between several children. And there were those that didn't have anything at all. So there was that ongoing challenge of, well, well what are we going to do to make sure we are reaching as many children as possible, if not all? That was really the aim. Um, so we had to provide paper packs, for example, to make sure that, that children who were unable to physically get online had something that they could they could still access um, and to keep our social media um, platforms, keep them very active because a lot of our parents did utilise that and any questions that they had would maybe be sent through the private mailbox or they would just email myself or another member of the management team directly. Um, on return, when we actually came back to school in August, um, the priority then was preparing for another future possible lockdown, which of course did happen after Christmas. But by that point, we were far more prepared. We had learned lots of lessons through lockdown one, um, looked at you know the, the upskilling of, of staff. Kay was still accessing lots of support via the digital champions meetings. And by that point, our staff were far more familiar with Google Classroom just through fully embracing it on their own and sharing good practice via Microsoft Teams meetings, accessing other things that were being shared in social media. There was a very supportive teacher network, I would say, throughout Scotland. Um, which was, was hugely beneficial. And you could see the difference in the children when they came back. They were accessing the, their homework, etc., on their Google Classroom. Um, and that just became quite normal at that point. And then, of course, lockdown did happen and we were in a position at that point. We had more laptops, which we were able to then offer out to children because we knew Right, we didn't have enough first time round. What are we going to do to target that? So we made sure that that, that was a box ticked and that um, families were prioritised in terms of who had nothing to who had maybe just one device per three children. Um, once we had things like that in place, the, the situation was looking a lot, a lot more brighter. We weren't as scared second time round. Um, and I think, yeah, I, you know, so there was progress made in that second lockdown and there was the pressure because schooling had been missed last year. There was the pressure that learning must continue second time round. It wasn't going to be OK to, to just dip in and, in and out of it. This was about filling, gap, filling the gaps from last year, but also making sure that progress was, was still made. Um, and really getting that balance right as well. It was, again, 
parents were, were, were working full time um, and sometimes there were three or four children accessing different levels of um, work within the house. So between staff, we had to then find ways of making sure that the tasks were appropriately being set. Was it too much? Did it suit the, the parents and their working hours? Were they able to support that? And if not, why not? What could we then do as another layer of support? So the phone calls then continued, the data um, continued as well to make sure that we were targeting the families that needed it the most. And you could see the different levels of IT um, skill in the children. They were then able to do things like edit documents and then return them to the teacher. Whereas before we had lots of children taking a photograph and sending it back. And while that was okay too, um, what we saw was a real progress in, in the ability of both staff and children by the time um, second lockdown came round. Um, but it was a challenging time. I bet. And it sounds as if um, you, you understood the role of an IT help desk uh, <laughs> with, with, the, with the parents and helping them. Um, so, Kate, just quickly um, before we finish, what would be if you had one or two developments that you would be looking to continue and build on sort of post pandemic um, or next session? What would that be? Um, so, coming back from the first lockdown, we then set up um, Google Classrooms throughout the whole school. And that is now being utilised for like homework and, you know, any tasks that are being sent home, the children are able to do that and send it back to their teachers. Um, and the infant class classes are actually using Seesaw now, just because it's a bit of an easier platform. Um, initially, we used it just to share progress, but now all the children's homework, you know, the activity section Seesaw, we're using that a lot more um, just as a way of sharing learning, doing homework, and it just means there's not paper and books going back and forward to the school. So it's a whole lot easier to organise um, your lessons in your day. Um, other aspects that we've looked at, we've moved things online, like our newsletters, um, lunches are now done online. It's all these types of things that we probably are going to work our way to get to eventually. But now that this has happened, it kind of throws you into it and you think, right, why not? You know, we're doing all these other things online. So we're doing that now and also working with outside agencies. Um, we work with a really robust like social and emotional learning team um, and they used to come into the school to deliver assemblies or just to, you know deliver lessons to the children so rather than just lose that completely they'll now do online teams meetings with the children so you just organize a time and then they can come up on the smart board so they're easily seen and the cameras and the microphones work so we can have that to be conversation um, so it's just things like that, just adapting what was normal practice and making it more, you know, digital, online and engaging. Um, but I would say coming back from that first lockdown, when we had a look at the initial um, self-evaluation on the Digital Schools Award, things that were maybe red or orange, when you actually looked at what it entailed, we'd done that over the lockdown. We've done it since coming back to the lockdown. And so when we readdressed it, that's when we saw, actually, we could go for this. We could go for the Digital School Award, submitted it, and you know what we had submitted was more than enough. Um, and I would say it's always daunting. It's like having an interview or having a test. You're always like, oh, I'm so nervous. But it was such an easy process. Um, I know that um, Catherine. Oh, lovely. And, you know, she just she wasn't trying to trip you up. She just wanted to talk to you and hear about your journey. It wasn't trying to catch you out. It was just tell me. About, I saw in your application that you said you're doing such and such. Tell me about it. So it's very much a conversation. Very easy. And definitely I'm so glad that we did it because now we've got the award and we're now able to share our experiences with other people. So it's been great. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Lucy, Kay, thank you so much for coming along uh, and telling us a little bit about your journey. I think you, you hit the nail on the head, Kay, at the end there that uh, it is a journey and we're never always there. And uh, especially after this lockdown, I think a lot of people, when they click those self-evaluations and look at them, will find that there are a lot of greens in there um, and definitely over the 70%. So thank you both for joining me. Uh, have a great rest of your day. Take care. Thank Bye. You. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.